Uh, greetings. This is uh, just doing a uh, special short version uh, of the cows. Um, wanted to uh, speak with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. about uh, homosexual activity. I was able to speak with him privately uh, last week, and he shared some really interesting thoughts, and I wanted him to share that uh, with you all uh, briefly. I didn't want to take up too much of his time. Uh, Mr. Fuller, when I spoke with you, you said that uh, white people think of white people tend to think of non-white people as boys and girls, and you tied that into uh, how that relates to homosexual, homosexual behavior. Um, could, you, could you share that with our audience so they can get a really clear picture of what you're saying? Well, there is a system of white supremacy in place, which just means uh, just mistreatment and domination and use of people in a royalist manner based on color. That's basically what it is. That's what racism is. It's just a variation of the uh, of royalism, but it's based on color rather than on other things uh, like uh, lineage and who your father was and what your name was, I mean, a thousand years ago, and uh, certain sets of traditions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what basically racism is, and it's turned out to be the most powerful form of royalism in the known universe now in the form of what we call racism and or white supremacy. Now, in any structure uh, that's dominant, you have to dominate the people in all areas of activity. If you don't dominate them in all areas of activity, then other areas of activity will slip away from the domination factor. And you have nine areas, according to what I have written, uh, that would just about cover most things. I think that's adequate enough. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Now, I call sex the eighth area of activity uh, in alphabetical order of the other areas of activity. So that just comes up as number eight. But sex is... Of the most powerful motivating force among people next to the system of white supremacy itself. Because whatever the dominant system is, that's what people react to on the planet. So the dominant system at this particular time in history, and has been as far back as anybody can remember who's breathing now, the dominant system. That's mistreatment of people based on color, domination of people based on color. So the sexual aspect is the second most powerful motivating force rather than the first under this system since the racist factor is the dominant uh, motivating force among people and sexual motivations are the second. Now, the races apparently, according to the evidence, have studied how people who are subject to them are motivated sexually. Now, uh, if a male is a boy, which you are a boy, you're a little boy when you're born and whatnot, and then you get to be a bigger boy and whatnot, and at a certain point you reach what they call a certain degree of maturity, uh, which is decided according to the social system that you have at hand, uh, you're now entering the threshold of what they call manhood. So you go from boys to men. Uh, females go from girls to women, and that's the normal process in most societies. So what the races did was look at that and said, well, you, you, when you have a system of racism, you only have one man and one woman category, and that would be the masters themselves. You can't have your victims of the system growing in the manhood and womanhood. So if they start trying to be men, if they go from boys to men, now you have a problem. You have a bigger problem than you had before. When they were boys, they were completely dependent on you. They understood that they'll do your bidding, and they're easier to control. Same way with the girls who are trying to be women. But when they start thinking that they are men, you're not going to have but one man in the house of white supremacy, and he's got to be white. And you're not going to have but one woman, and she has to be white. So now it, it defies logic that you would allow them to go from boys to men. So if you're not going to allow them to go from boys to men, 
what will you allow them to do? Because they are constantly growing, they are constantly getting smarter, and they have a natural tendency to want to break away from boyhood and to become men. Say, so what you do is divert them away from wanting to become men and have, if it's a male, have him go from boyhood to femalehood. In other words, he changes his gender altogether, at least in his mind. <clears throat> then he's easier to control. Then you do the same thing with the female. Take the black female, and r rather than allow her to go the normal progression of things, steer her in the direction away from becoming a woman and in the direction of becoming a male. In other words, she will switch genders in her mind. Now, her body didn't switch genders, but we can probably do some things that give her the illusion that her body can be made to switch genders too. Now, when you do that, what you have is confusion. You have added confusion, and one of the best ways to control people for a long period of time, particularly if you confuse them sexually, is through confusing them sexually so that you have a male thinking he's a female or wanting to be a female, even if he's struggling and trying and whatnot and trying to do everything that a female does, but he doesn't have the, he's, doesn't have the uh, physical equipment. But he's got it in his mind anyway. He's just determined that he's going to act like one and be one and do the things that females do and look at males like, uh, like a female looks at males normally. And then over in the female column, have the female do the same thing. Only thing about it, she's not going to try to grow into womanhood. She's going to try to do everything that she sees males doing, including in the bedroom. Hmm. Try to become an artificial male. And she can do this in her mind because the mind is very flexible. A person can actually think that they are a bird if they want to. But before they try to fly or jump off a building, it's best that they get their equipment for doing so. <laughs> you know. So that's the way that works. And when you can get people on that role and when you have people subject to you, you can always propagandize anything. You can make anything look like it's the fashion because you set the rules for the society. So that's what's going on. I tried to be uh, as comprehensive as I possibly could in that description, and I hope yes, that sir. people could understand what was being said. Yes, sir. So that's I, what we have now. We're mm -hmm. heading in that direction now, full steam ahead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, when I spoke with you, um, I, I said that, you know, the, the counter argument that I frequently hear is that, well, uh, there are a lot of white people who are also participating in so-called homosexual activity. And, uh, you know, it's, this is not something where they're just trying to trick black people into doing it. You have people who are born so-called gay or homosexual, and, uh, you know, this is no trick at all. If it was, you wouldn't see all these white people uh, going around and doing it and being mistreated because they are participating in these so-called homosexual acts. Uh, what, would your, what would your view on that be? Depends on how it plays out in the end. Mm. Now, if the system of white supremacies remains intact, then that will prove the uh, supposition just outlined. Mm. That will prove that it's valid, that it's, it is designed basically to support what is already in place. Otherwise, you would have a major the system of white supremacy would go out of business. There would be no reason to keep it in business if the white people were serious about really getting rid of racism and getting rid of what they call all of the sexual and gender uh, categories and all like that because racism is an artificial category. Mm. See, just because people are of different colors doesn't say that they are members of a race. Mm. That's an artificial construct. No one is supposed to be a member of a race. That's, that's something completely made up. So if you can, you can do the same thing with gender, you can see, do the same thing with a lot of things, but you have to wait until it reaches a certain point where you've got enough evidence to prove the proposition that you made in the first place. Mm. Now, like I say, this is 
my concept of the way things are going because there is still a system of racism in place. Now, if racism is still in place when all of the so-called anti-sexual, that's what I call it, behavior yes, comes to full fruition and everybody is accepting of it, everybody is participating in it or embracing it or parading it around and saying that it's the best thing ever discovered since ever, okay? Mm. Now, and you still have a system of racism in place, then that will help prove the supposition, because ordinarily, all of racism would disappear. But see, it's designed to lure. Now, here's where I based that on, the luring part. In the history of the system of white supremacy, there's a thing called whiskey. Mm -hmm. It was very popular, the use of it. Now, if you are a practice deceiver, one thing that you know about the science and the art of deception, you cannot deceive people into doing things unless you are doing quite a bit of it yourself. If you're going to be what you call a real arch deceiver, and the white supremacists have proven that they are arch deceivers, they are very skillful at deception. So in order to deceive people, you can't get people to drink whiskey, and you're sitting there never drinking any of it yourself. So there's some historical record of this. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do, a deceiver will sit there and practice drinking whiskey under control conditions. You know, take a little sip, know exactly where the point is where you get good and drunk or where you don't get good and drunk. Then once you learn of what they say, and some people brag about it in bars and whatnot, said, hey, I can drink you under the table, meaning they can out-drink you, that you will drink. I mean, that they will drink and you will drink, but when they drink, they don't get drunk. <clears throat> but you wind up drunk. Many males who have tried to deceive females into sexual activity, you know, back in the days when whiskey was a bigger thing than dope, used to get into the booth in the restaurant and start that process. Say, now what I'll do, I'll know she's not willing really, but she'll be willing before the night's over because I'm going to get her to drink some of this stuff that I brought with me. Mm hmm and he'll be drinking and she'll be drinking. He'll take a sip and she'll take a sip. Next thing you know, she's willing to go along with anything. She doesn't know what she's doing, but he does. Now, many a person, particularly pimps, understand that thing mm -hmm. very well. Now, it's the same way with whiskey as it, was, as, as it was used, according to the record of white supremacists themselves, in dealing with people who are called Indians. Sit down, Chief. We're going to have a Thanksgiving Day. We're going to thank, give thanks for all of the wonderful things that have been done for both me and you by our Maker, by the great spirits. And, in fact, I brought some spirits with me. It's in a bottle. You never had anything like this before, but you will want it after you get it. It's called fire water. It's full of spirits. It'll give you spirit like you have never had before, Chief. And the Chief said, well, what's wrong with just pure water from the river, from the great streams of our lands? Say, oh, yeah, but you never had nothing like this. This is something we made in a factory. It's got water in it. No mistake about that. But we got a little alcohol and a few other stuff, a little other stuff that I've added here. It'll pep you up, give you another perspective on looking at the mountains all together. Mm, might be good stuff. So he gives it to the chief. And at the same time now, the chief is a little suspicious. So he's drinking right along with the chief. So that means everything must be okay. So he's drinking. I'm drinking. Next thing you know, the chief is under the table. The chief's not used to it. And, and you the white supremacist, while he's drunk, or when he begins to come out of the stupor, Says, okay, chief, I got some paper here I want you to sign. I'm going to give you 22 bucks for Manhattan. <laughs> now, when the chief really gets sober, see, now he's angry. He wants to go on the warpath. But he's already signed everything away. 
And what was the instrument for doing it? Deception through Mm. an act of using whiskey. Now, the whiskey, you know, that's working all over the world and start they're starting to do it in South Africa, in Thailand, and other places and whatnot, is sex and anti-sex. Oh, you don't need to be a female all the time. After all, females have to go through a lot of agony. Wouldn't you like to be like your brother? Well, I don't have the equipment of my brother. Oh, well, you can pretend that you have it. I got some stuff I can sell you in the store. Strap-ons, you name it. And you just get it in your head that you should be a male. Because males can get things done. They got privileges that females don't have. And you say, well, you know, I don't particularly, or, you know, the lady says, I don't particularly want to be a male and all like that. Well, it's something, you know, have you tried it? You don't know it. Don't knock it if you ain't tried it. <laughs> and knowing black people, particularly in this area of the world, we like anything that looks like it's bordering on something new because we're so tired of everything that ain't new. And they won't know we'll go for it. We'll pioneer, you know, we'll lead the parade, which is what they try to get us to do. Now, you can't get a decent place to stay. You can't get a decent job. But if you want to lead the gay parade and you're black, they will reserve a spot for you. (laughs) If you don't believe it, try it. That's what I mean by evidence Mm. of what I'm talking about. The record shows this. And they start with who? The youngest. Okay. Always work with them in the choir and churches and whatnot. And they do it through the most intelligent of black people. They don't start with the fellow sitting there with the wine bottle in front of the liquor store who's 40 years old. Because he's a black male. That's why he's drinking. He's been disallowed to ever be a man, and he knows he'll never be one. He'll always be a boy. And that is tearing him up inside. That's why he left his wife, left his children, and all like that. I mean, he gave up on everything and started drinking. That's why he's sitting on the curb out there. Because he's still struggling to be a man. And he will fight people right there in that parking lot about his manhood. So you can't hard to get to him, even when he's drunk. You say, oh, man, get away from me. Don't be feeling on me. I got this big hip woman out here, you know, this big leg woman out here, you know. You know, if I want if I want to do something like that, that's who I'm gonna get with. I don't want you. Get your old rough, dirty hands off of me. You know, <laughs> man, I like women. You know, I'm a man. You know, I'm a man. Look at me, I'm a man. You know, I don't want no man. Even when I was in the joint, I didn't want one. See, that's the way he'll talk. He's forty years old. Okay. But what do they do? They go around and get the teachers. And the guys who are going into the ministry, and that's where they spread that gospel hmm. among black intellectuals. Because the street dude, see, he's still struggling. I mean, he, he ain't going to never make it because you can't be a man under the system of white supremacy. You've got to remain a boy or turn into a female. Hmm. By, by turning into a female, I mean having the kind of ideas about the opposite sex that a female has, hmm. but you're a male. But you've got the same idea about a male as your sister has. You're trying to outdo her. You're trying to take your sister's boyfriend. That's the way the white supremacists want it. Hmm. I, uh, my co-host, uh, I believe is here, she is a non-white female, and uh, she is 10 years old. Uh, but she has been studying uh, your work, and she understands that there is a system of racism, white supremacy. Uh, I was hoping she could ask some questions uh, as well. Um, uh, are you there, uh, Justice? Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Um, di- uh, did you, sorry about the uh, misunderstanding. Um, if you, uh, no did problem. you, okay. Do you have some uh, questions you would like to ask Ms. Uh, Mr. Fuller? Um, not at this moment. Okay. I will, uh, well, she can think about what I said. See, here again, codification is about not taking 
Neely Fuller's word for anything. Mm-hmm. In fact, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to just walk around and take a look. So you just don't jump into things. Just walk around and take a look and see if it doesn't start adding up. Because that's what I do. I don't jump to a conclusion and then go around trying to bombard people with the conclusion I jump to. Hmm. I just go around and see if there's evidence of what I think might be happening. Hmm. In fact, I challenge, I challenge, you might say, if you want to use that term, I, I say questioning, it's not a challenge. If I have a concept, I'll go around and question the concept that I have before I even reveal it and see, you know, well, something is going on. Now, why is this happening? Why here? Why now? How come it, how come it wasn't happening, you know, uh, 60 years ago? Mm-hmm. Why is it happening now? And why is it happening involving black people on this scale? Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Yes, and I'm sir. saying now, someone must have thought it up, or it wouldn't be happening, because it's something that's happening between people. Mm-hmm. And anything that black people do, the white supremacists always have something to do with it. Mm. Otherwise, it's not going to be happening in the first place. If it's something that's bad for their business, they will cut it off. (laughs) They'll put a stop to it. But if it's something that they think is good for their business, they'll let not only let it roll, they will support it. Mm. Now, I've heard white supremacists argue about white people engaging in what we call homosexuality or gayism or lesbianism and whatnot. And that's another thing, even the terms don't add up. Uh, Because I've even asked the questions, which is what you do in any kind of research. Why are gay people called gay? Nobody answers that. Is it named after a person, Mr., you know, Frank Joshua J., uh, gay or what, you know, who started it, you know? or who promoted it, who had an organization by that name, and it was named after him. I can see that. But it's just, you know, all of a sudden, gay. What does that mean? And then you say gays and lesbians. Then you add another one, transgender. Gays, it started off just being gays, then lesbians, then transgender. So one legitimate question is, where is the cutoff point? Hmm. See what I mean? And another thing, is a lesbian gay? Why do you say gays and lesbians? I mean, you know, these are just questions, logical right. questions. Right. If you got a big sign out and you're carrying it around and telling everybody to join in and support it and contribute some money to it and all like that, people should know what they're contributing money to. Mm-hmm. You know? And another thing, where is the payoff? Now, if it's an improvement over what we call traditional sex, because they call it alternative, that's another term. This is a alternative, you know, meaning something that's different from the usual or something that's various, a variation of the basic. Well, then you ask several questions there. Well, what's, is there anything incorrect about the basic? And a person might say no, but this is an alternative, of course. You know, for people who just got tired of the basics, want to do something different. What's wrong with variety? What's wrong with diversity, diverting from one thing to another? Well, maybe nothing, but let's examine it. Examine it for what? To see if it is an improvement over what you already had. And if so, justify it. By showing, by example, where is the improvement, which one of the, see, when you start talking about homosexuality or lesbianism, these are not just abstract words. These are talking about you have to do certain things to qualify. So what are these things that you do? And which one of them is an improvement over what has been done? That's just like a person might come around and say, well, hey, you know, I used to kind of be attracted to P. 
people, you know. I've had several wives and all like that. Uh, even had a little incest, I mean, every now and then, I mean, you know. And uh, But I finally came to the conclusion that people ain't where it's at at all. I'm in the bear. Hmm. You know, you say, what do you mean you're in the bear? I'm into bear. I go out in the woods and I chase me down a bear. The bear ain't chasing me no more. I'm chasing them. <laughs> I have found that that's a wonderful alternative. I mean, after all, man, I mean, let's face it. Look at these marriages and divorces and whatnot. I don't have no trouble with the bears. I mean, I used to didn't think of anything about bears except just going to the ball game, you know. But I found out that, man, if, if you really snuggle up to a bear, you'll never want to go back <laughs> doing nothing else. Now, where did you get that idea? Well, it just came to me one night. I'm tired of these women. In fact, people was telling me, well, if you don't like women, get you a man. Well, I'm tired of them, too. <laughs> so I'm in the bear. See, now, you might laugh, but it's going to come to that if it ain't already. Because there are some people into that. Mm. Yeah, they call it, what do you call it, bestiality? Yes, sir. Yeah, see what I mean? That might be a wholesale thing in about another 10 years. They say, well, hey, well, you know, this gay and lesbian thing about play it out, man. Ain't where it's at, you know. Man, everybody's trying to preserve the bears now. You know, I'm trying to get me a panda. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what is the point that I'm making? It's a lots of things that the mind can do. The mind is extremely <coughs> inventive and extremely flexible. But the basic question is, is this type of activity an improvement, and if so, why? Otherwise, why are you coming around asking black people who don't even have a roof over their head that this is what they should be pushing now? Mm -hmm. They don't even have a decent school or a decent job. But now you want them to get, join the gay rights movement, and that mm -hmm. should be their priority. We should drop everything else and make that a priority. I don't yes, see sir. the justification at all. Mm -hmm. They have some uh, white people who came around years ago and started saying, calling it the rainbow, you know, kind of, uh, you might excuse the pun, tailgating. Jesse Jackson's rainbow push for civil rights. And then they got to saying, well, what is this all about? And when the question was asked, they answered by saying, well, it's another division of civil rights. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the same thing. Discriminating against gays is the same as discriminating against blacks. And a lot of mm -hmm. black people say, wait a minute, it may sound like the same thing, but it ain't the same thing but they were able to shout all of that down. It is the same thing. Why is it the same thing? Because I said so. White supremacy in action again. Always because I said so. See, but, you know, but that, that don't, you know, it sounds like it could be right, but it, it's something that don't still don't add up. It ain't the same thing. It is the same thing. Trust me. No different. Discrimination is discrimination which is another word that people should pay attention to. Everybody discriminates every day. You discriminate when you uh, uh, decide to ride the bicycle to work rather than catch the bus. And does that say that you are discriminating against the bus riders? You know, so that word discrimination, I don't even use it because everybody discriminates. It just means choosing. But what is the key? The key is, is it a choice that's constructive? When you start talking about black people's plight now, see, that's a different thing altogether. Is it constructive or is it non-constructive? Because it's got to be one or the other. Is it an improvement? Now, we already have a mess with the male-female thing, but you would have that anyway under any system that's unjust. But now, are you making a bigger mess? Or are you straightening out all the mess that ever was? I have no reason to believe that this is helping to straighten out anything. Mm -hmm. It's helping to make it worse, particularly when you start doing it right down to the grade school level. Mm -hmm.
start saying that this is something that and this is just what you you children need. It's seven years old, and this is what I need. I don't even know what sex is yet. Now you're telling me about alternatives to sex. Well, let's start out so that your mind will get straight. Now, Jane has two mommies, thinking about getting three. Now, what benefit is this to Jane? Well, she learns diversity at an early age. 